All right. Hey, Corey. Hey, Tim. How are you? I'm doing great. Looks like you just uh, cut some fabric for a I customer. I did. Welcome to the quilter's block. All right. Okay. I'm going to set this camera up because everyone's like, why? Where's Tim? I'm back here. <laughs> I'm going to set this camera up so we can do like a little interview and, and take a tour of your uh, your shop. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Okay. Y'all y'all hold on. Got to make sure I've got it set properly. Maybe you'll open it a little bit so you get your head too. All right, Corey, good to see you. Good to see Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll kind of talk to the people there. The camera's over in that. Yeah, it's right there. Um, so it's fun. Uh, tell me, because this is the quaintest, cutest little town. What town are we in? This is Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Lake Lake Mills. Okay. Legendary Lake Mills. Oh, legendary. Well, you know, I loved when I came in, we, uh, I was looking at the map. And I was like, there's not a town square. There's a town triangle. There's a town triangle. <laughs> Commons cute. Park. Yeah. I'll put a picture of it up right now. Or This is to remind me later to put a picture on the video. So they'll be looking at a picture of, of the, the, the park. And I have video of it too, because I, I was like, so, it's so cute there. And you're in this great shop, little shop, but full of stuff. Absolutely full of stuff. Yep. I have every nook and cranny with something in it right now. And I keep adding more. So what I love about it is, you know, you're like a... This is a quilt shop with a whole bunch of stuff in it and a couple of great lines of fabric. So who do you carry? I carry a lot of Moda fabrics and Riley Blake Designs fabrics. So all the little designers and, and big designers that come along with those brands of fabrics. So Lori Holt, uh, Three Sisters, um, you name it. You were telling me, I think, about uh, Lori Holt fabric that I thought was really lovely, uh, that you really she's some of the fabric you really like because she coordinates her colors over all the different collections because i know some people are going to know all this stuff already but um, a lot of our viewers a lot of people who, who follow me are new to quilting maybe they were making masks first and they came into quilting so so tell me what like the the philosophy you were telling me about her stuff and why you like it so much yeah so Lori holt is by far my favorite fabric designer pattern designer notion designer um, and one of the things that makes it so popular and so easy to use is that it doesn't matter if you have a collection from four years ago and a collection from today. If the, the fabric is called denim in the colorway, it's the denim's gonna match no matter what. So all of her collections are interchangeable and you may not even know right off the top of your head which collection it came from um, because they can all mix and match. And you were showing me earlier, uh, I'm not going to bring it out for everybody, but there are these, uh, these are Lori Holt uh, of Be In My Bonnet, and these are cute uh, patterns that she created. But the greens in this pattern are going to go with the greens that you would use for this one, and you could maybe pick greens from a different collection of hers. You don't have to necessarily pick this exact green. Is that sort of the idea that you can Absolutely. sort of mix and match? Absolutely. So when you get to the shop and they don't have the exact fabric that's on the cover of that pattern, grab a different fabric that's one of her collections that's called basil and it's going to be the same shade of green so you're still going to get the same look in your finished product as you would if you had the exact fabric it's funny so people are going to wonder why we're not really looking at each other while we're talking but we can see each other in the, yeah, in the camera absolutely. so it's kind of cool like i don't want to leave them out of it you know i i kind of wonder if you started a quilt shop so you would have an excuse to get to quilt every day <laughs> I, that is a little bit of it and i started the quilt shop so i had the excuse to surround myself with fabric every day um, and it's really nice to just walk over to the shelf and grab exactly what I need for the la last project without having to run somewhere. Yeah, oh, and, and notions. I mean, I, you have an entire wall of templates. I'm gonna cut to video of that right now because you have some really great templates uh, from a number of different uh, people, but I love these sort of bright yellow, which were those? They're like almost neon. Yeah, Who so the those? Missouri Star Quilt Company makes some wonderful templates and rulers in an acrylic that is this bright yellow. And so it catches the light from all different directions. You can see your lines and the template on dark fabrics as well as light fabrics, blue fabrics, black fabrics, you name it. I love it. That's, uh, now you're speaking of Missouri Star, um, those of you who don't know that company, you should look up really great. Jenny Doan, the, uh, the founder and, and main creative force behind the company so far, but there's so many people, obviously. So many people. And it's funny when you're a man in sewing or in quilting, you get to be in rooms where you're the only man and sewing or quilting, right? So you were telling me a story about you going, I think, to, to Hamilton? Absolutely. So I attended, um, in 2021, August, I attended the Dome Girls Retreat. And so a lot of people were like, why are you going to a girls retreat? And I'm like, because it's not. It's it's a retreat hosted by the Doan Girls. Yeah. So Jenny Doan, Natalie Doan, Misty Doan. Um, Natalie is Jenny's daughter. Misty is Jenny's daughter-in-law. Um, and they were our instructors for the week. But I was the only gentleman in a room full of 150 ladies. And so there was a little bit of a tension. And 
I tell people I went to this retreat. It was a huge retreat. I went by myself, but I, once I got there, I was no longer alone because I made 150 friends. Yeah. How great is that? No, I get that attention too. I'll go into a fabric store. I remember when I was young, I would go into a fabric store and people would say, are you looking for your mom? Are you lost? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, I'm looking for wool gabardine. I'm making a Star <laughs> Trek costume. I need some. So that's all. It's always, it's been more, it's becoming more common for men to be involved in sewing and quilting. Um, and I think actually, uh, it's fun to me to see how much men and women are a bit alike in their excitement over geometry and form and color and all those things that that's really not a gendered thing at all. Not at right? all. Not at all. And, and there's actually a lot of men out there in the design world for quilting. Christopher Thompson, the tattooed quilter, yeah. um, is part of Riley Blake Designs, designing fabrics and, and doing a lot of their promotional things for that fabric company. So, um, and you're exactly right. We approach it the same way. We take a piece of fabric, we cut it into a smaller piece of fabric, and then we sew it to another piece of fabric to make a bigger piece of fabric. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's that's kind of quilting in a nutshell. Well, I used to explain to people that like, um, I, 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 I was part of that as a teenager. Oh, sewing is for girls. And then I used a sewing machine and thought, oh, this is just a power tool for fabric. This is Absolutely. no different. Then, I mean, and you can hurt yourself <laughs> just like you can you with can other power tools, right? Not that I've ever done that. Or no, no, none of us have <laughs> scars and marks and everything all over. Are you missing part of a part of a thumb? Yeah, a little rotary cutter yeah, accident just, just before little, Christmas be, last you know, year. I just reviewed uh, a rotary cutter that was sent to me on my channel, and I still am having these sort of bad thoughts of what happens if somebody uses this thing wrong because it's a pretty crazy powered electric rotor oh wow yes so i'm so like i don't man, i hope people are careful if they do buy one i don't think most people are going to need that but if, um, for those that do i'm like let's hope you've gone through all the, the things because even a regular rotary cutter take your finger off yep and read the manual first right <laughs> oh you're supposed to read, the read instructions? those instructions don't just look at the pictures I, it was lovely ask I, me how i, I know I, I never oh I, I can imagine so it's wednesday um, and you're open right now, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, correct? Right? So yep. I'll, make, I'll put a picture of the hours as well. They, they're current as of the video, the filming of this video, which is May 1st, 2024. Uh, let's say though, so you're open those four days and a lot of good hours. Even while I was here, I thought, well, I'll get there early and you know, it'll be quiet. You've already had three customers in the door. Absolutely, you and, just never know. So you sometimes have some pretty busy days, I would assume. I've had people waiting at the door at 9.30 in the morning when I'm ready to open. I've had people come in at five minutes to close and wanting to pick out all the fabrics for their project and they were racing to get here. And that's not a problem, no big deal. Well, that's the value of having a, a quilt store run by an enthusiast who is also, you know, who can talk, you can talk to anybody about, I've, I heard you, we had great conversations here already. And that it's a, you know, it's a passion, something you really love doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you've been in this store for not a year yet. No, November 1st before. of last year. So I had a store before about 15 miles north um, and had that location for a little over a year. And, you know, for lots of different circumstances, I had to close that store. Um, took a little break over the summer to attended some classes and just did some Smart. fun sewing and didn't stop quilting and um, found a space. Signed a lease in July, got to open up in November, so. Well, I'm gonna put some video um, of some of the other shops that are here on the square, the triangle. Uh, <laughs> can we call it the triangle? I think that'd be great. So you're in the you're, downtown uh, you're, area. Uh, you're the quilter square, uh, our quilter's block on- The square. On the yeah. square. Uh, I love it. It, it. There are some really nice other shops around here. So there's, if you, you're not, you're not gonna be, if you travel here, which you should, it's not, it's, kind of in between Milwaukee and Madison, yep, right? about so, halfway-ish. Uh, get yourself over here, check it out, and check out all the other great, uh, there's a craft store next door and a couple of other really nice places with finished goods and other things. So, and you have actually a number of finished goods. I think you have some quilts on consignment, I do. some things that you've done, some... some lots of table toppers, table runners, um, quilts, throw quilts. I've got stockings, I've got scarves for winter. So a lot of different finished goods and items and gifts. So even if you're a non-quilter, you might find something here for yourself. And I think I looked at your pattern wall, which is floor to ceiling. Uh, and, Literally. And then I was like, that's a lot of patterns. And you said, well, some of them are doubled up because there's not enough room for all of them. So if you're here checking out the patterns, make sure you also look behind them because the odds are there's probably some extras there. There's a very good odds, especially the same same pattern designer. There might be doubled up. If there's only like one or two of a pattern left, I might double it up with another one because I'm always getting new patterns and new ideas in.
Well, and th that's the other great part is that quilt patterns really don't go out of style. I no. mean, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a quilt pattern of a VCR, you know, like, well, maybe that could be a good one. Because yeah. Somebody bought a quilt pattern of a sewing machine earlier. I thought that was really cute. Um, just like me, you've got a lot of inspiration from family members who sewed. And I think uh, I'm going to, I want to show the picture uh, of your grandmother's thread uh, spool, you know, uh, holder. Uh, how important was your grandmother or other people in your life to getting you uh so how important are those influences in your life to getting you to the point where you're here? Yeah, so my grandmother used to do a lot of mending. So my grandfather was a contractor and did a lot of things and you're constantly ripping and tearing clothes and needing work clothes and stuff. So I used to sit behind her in the laundry room at her sewing machine and watch her sew and, and mend, really. And my mother was a crafter and so that, that influenced me for sure on the creative side of things. and. Um, watching her sew things here and there or make curtains for the cabin or whatever. Um, and so it always, I always had an interest in learning to use this sewing machine. I never thought I'd ever be a quilter. In fact, when I was um, offered in 2020 to take some lessons with a friend um, during the height of COVID and we were already stood next to each other at work. And so she's like, just come over, we'll learn to quilt. And I'm like, no, remember I buy the fabric and you make the quilt for yeah. me, right? <laughs> um, Cause this is not gonna be my thing. Yeah. And uh, you know, two and a half hours later, I had two quilt blocks done, which is an exceptional long amount of time for a quilt block. Yeah, yeah. well, But it was learning. my first time, right? And so, and I was a costumer before that. So okay. I already knew how to sew and I had the sewing machine. It just was a matter of, do I really want to do this? Because I see how much time it takes them to make that. So, yeah. and I sat down at the machine and well, I came home, put my machine on the table, and I'm like, well, now what? Now what am I going to do? I think I'll just order some fabric. Yeah, you got bit. You got bitten got by bit. that bug. Yeah, yeah that was that was March, and in uh, June, I bought a long arm quilting machine. Um, in November, Wait, I, that soon? Yeah, most people don't even yeah. get the long no, arm because ever. It was COVID, so you couldn't really take yeah. things places, yeah. right? So yeah, I bought a long arm quilting machine in June, and then in November, I got the robotics for that machine. Um, November, I launched my online store. Um, because I just really wanted to connect with the quilting world in another way. Um, and it was the idea that I always wanted a brick and mortar. I wanted to create a quilting community. I wanted a, yeah. a classroom space where I can connect new quilters with old quilters and learn from each other just as much as any instructor that's sitting in the front of the room. And you've got a, a lovely classroom. Now, I know you're in a small space, but you've got enough room there for quite a few people. Um, and that's got to be part of the lifeblood of a quilt shop, isn't it? It is. It is. We have um, four to eight can fit in a class, depending upon whether machines are involved or if we're doing mm -hmm. hand sewing. Um, <laughs> I don't want to ever do hand sewing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so four to eight. And we have had some no-sew classes, some ornaments and things like that, where it's oh, yeah. fabric and, and pins, lots and lots of like yeah. 200 plus pins. Um, that oh, we like those ones people. where they, you flip and fold all the Absolutely. fabric and all that? Yeah, that looks quilted and looks incredible. But okay. In a couple hours, you, so you much too work can have for an ornament. A, yeah, for an ornament, but it's not. It's one ornament. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's I am speed. I want to be done quick. I don't want this to, like, you know what would be, I, I, I did this in my, I'm completely going off anything we talked about before, but uh, when I was in my, in college and I was making stuff and I really wanted to get my art out, I would totally, uh, but I didn't want to do turned applique or, or even any kind of where I had to blanket stitch and whatever else. I would literally just wonder under whole sheets of fabric cut my shapes out and make all these flower things and even if you just iron it and don't ever come back and stitch over it it still holds absolutely like if that it's a wall hanging glued. or something that fabric yeah. is good especially if it's something you're not going to wash over, over and over again well and i and also even loved a little bit of the fraying i thought it actually added to the because i was doing nature stuff you know a lot of flower arrangements and stuff because i don't really want to poke posies all day long but i liked that that's actually something fun you can do as a way to just get your creative brain going not everything has to be this intricately stitched you know thing right so, absolutely absolutely and once you use a, a fusible product you, it, it's glued down it might I fray wanna, a little bit i, I want to show people because you yeah for your friend of yours made this this is yeah. a, this is the cutest thing and it's a kite on a, but this is a quick i mean it's just squares sewn together it's just squares sewn together like cut out back is done it is quilted and she added little pockets and added some dowel to kind of keep its shape and add a little tail with some bows so should we name check your friend so that when I make this Sharon. for my, Sharon, when I make this for my channel for people to see how to do it, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, she won't feel mad. Not I, at all, not at all. And in fact, uh, nope, that was you had it perfect. Oh, I had it before like this. Yep. Okay. 
Yeah, the hook was showing a little bit. So now I'm, I'm, I'm out of the frame. Let me get out of the frame. To... Oh, well, this, this is, is your channel. <laughs> <laughs> It's Welcome funny. to the Quilters Block. Corey reached out to me because of the channel. So it's so great. I happen to be in Wisconsin. I'm like, I can come by and see your shop. So he's going to move in here. I, I'm going to convince him. I'm going to tell you. Well, first of all, I was in Madison, which I loved. It was just marvelous. But all these other little communities. I don't want to be here in the winter, though. I'd have to be a snowbird. You could be a snowbird. I can be like a reverse. I'd like Most that. of y'all moved to Florida. I moved from Florida up to <laughs> up north. Wisconsin for the summer. So you're cranking up. I mean, you've only been doing this for a very short period of time, but you're already building that quilt community, right? Of Absolutely. People and you have, I mean, you, you answered a couple phone calls earlier today with people that were, you know, customers of yours. One lady came in and was here shopping again. You knew her by name. How valuable has that been to you personally to be able to build that, what you talked about? That's been amazing because one of the, the most rewarding things for me is watching somebody cut or buy fabric, taking it home, and then they bring their project back and yeah. they get to see it, you know, and sometimes show I and get tell, to celebrate. Right? Show and tell, absolutely. Yeah. A trunk show, a little mini trunk show. And I've got customers who do that all the time, especially because they're so proud. They're making that their grand first grandchild, um, grandbaby, a quilt or or their you know niece or nephew or somebody they know is is sick or or going off to college and they're making that quilt and so they're so they want to celebrate that yeah. and they want to celebrate with that with somebody who appreciates it just yes. as much as they would in the time and effort because every now and then you give a quilt to somebody who might not be quilt worthy and they're like oh that's really nice and then they just kind of set it aside and you think um, you know how many hours i spent I making that thing? Like, yeah. really nice huh uh-huh yep Yep, okay, you're not getting another one. Well, that's the other interesting thing, and I, this this video is already longer than I expected it to be, but that's how much fun we're having talking together. One of the things I find fascinating is you, you think about all the hours that you put into quilting and other stuff, and so few of us do it for ourselves. Right. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times it's being done to give to someone else. And so that thing is out of your life, which actually probably sometimes is better that it's out of your life because you need to make need room so for the next quilts, thing. Yeah. yeah, you don't have room for that many. We talked about what it takes to be able to hang stuff all over the place, right? But that really is the case of like, I have so many memories of quilts that I made, but I don't even know that I have all the pictures together in one place yeah. of but all that's the quilts what, that I've made. That's why we have the scraps. We can oh, you use, keep the you scraps. Know, you keep those little scraps. And I actually have a, a little picture. <laughs> that's why, right? Yeah, um, sure. I have a little picture on the wall in my sewing room of the first um, quilts, nine quilts I made one year for Christmas, oh. um, my very first year of quilting for family members. Uh, and so it's got a little scrap of them tucked in. And so each one kind of oh. makes like a mini block. None of the fabrics go with each other, but it's important to me because it, yeah. it's all of the quilts I made that year. So tell me, what is there anything you do with quilts that maybe the others of us aren't doing? And I'll give you an example. My grandmother, every quilt she made, and I have two grandmothers, I've talked about them before. They lived right next door to each other in the same uh, little subdivision and they quilted together and sewed together all the time. And one of them, and they were very opposite people, but one of them, every quilt she made for us, she would take a penny from that year and sew it into the corner binding. And it would be a way, like, maybe none of us saw it because it's in the thing, but for her, that was a way to to take the, to, to date the quilt. If somebody ever right. opened it, they'd find a penny. And why is there a 1978 penny in here? Well, it's because right. that's when she made the quilt. So is there anything you do to put your own stamp on a quilt when you give it to someone? Not very often. Um, usually my stamp is I choose those fabrics very much for the person I'm giving it to. Oh, good, okay. So, so I mean, they might not be a fabric that I love yeah. um, or even necessarily like, um, but it's fabric that speaks to me about that yeah. person. It represents them in some way. And some of the quilts I will add a label. Um, we should label all of our quilts yeah, because we these quilts are going to outlive us many, many, many years. And someday down the road, somebody's going to look at that quilt and say, I wonder when this was made or what was the, the meaning behind it, or why did somebody make this quilt? I mean, um, we, we do that now. When I'm a collector of vintage, a, a vintage quilt. You yep. go, I wonder who made this. And, and the, those stories, I know sometimes people, quilters, I'm talking specifically to people in the audience right now who are watching. You may not think that your story is anything special or different or new or whatever. You may think I'm sort of a standard person who quilt. It's not true. That There are so many specific things that you could share with us uh, or the people who get that quilt. And trust me, my grandmother, I can tell you all about her, but that was the only thing she did to mark that quilt. I wish she had written me a story about the quilt or signed it or put her name on it because it is her love in that quilt that she gave me. And every time I put that quilt on, because I have one quilt left that she made me, um, the rest were when I was a kid and then we didn't take care of them, obviously. But this one I have, I was almost an adult and so I've held on to it. And it is like her hugging me again. Absolutely. And I would love for it to have even more. So, you know, you, you, you are special to that person you gave that quilt to or that personal item to. You should make sure you mark it in some way. 
And there's some relatively easy ways to do that. So maybe yep. I'll do a video at some point that talks about how to do that. Labels and fabric See, markers. coming up with all kinds of great new ideas. All right, anything before we go that you think people need to know about coming to visit you or going to a quilt shop in general? Um, just spend some time there. You know, don't try to do it all in like five minutes. You know, spend some time, look around because I guarantee you, you go around once or twice and you're going to see something the second or third or fourth time that you didn't see the first time. Yeah. So spend some time. And, and, and you refresh this place. So people yeah. should come back. Regularly. Oh, absolutely. And and people will walk in and say, where's that fabric that was over here? I'm like, oh, well, I had to make room. So I've completely reset um, everything that was over there is now over here. Um, so absolutely. So there's always new fabric collections. I mean, these fabric companies publish and release hundreds of different mm. fabrics a year hundreds and, and thousands probably um so there's always something new patterns fabrics notions sometimes it's a notion you didn't know you needed yeah and you needed <laughs> or there, you had a problem and you realize now you need it so absolutely. make sure you come back absolutely well i bet so much fun Corey, hanging out with you here at the quilters block uh in what's the city name again lake mills wisconsin lake mills i keep wanting to say the other name so i don't want to go ahead and say watertown okay in lake mills wisconsin uh y'all come visit him and until next time Stay crafty. Bye for now. All right, you have a customer that came in, so I'm gonna let you go. Okay. All right, bye.